It's time for battle. Churches, battles, kings and queens, factories and big machines, castles, forts and in-betweens, the stories that are told. Anglo-Saxon Britain was a dangerous place, with kingdoms constantly vying with one another for power and dominance, and by the 7th century, none would match the power of the Kingdom of Northumbria. Stretching from South East Scotland all the way to the Humber, it was originally two kingdoms, Bernicia, which covered South East Scotland and modern-day Northumberland and Durham, and Deira, which stretched from Teesside to the Humber. In the 7th century, it was united by a ruler named Ethelfrith, who then died in battle against his rival Raedwald, King of East Anglia. The throne then passed to a man named Edwin, possibly Ethelfrith's brother-in-law, who, through many battles and wars and politics, had come to be the most powerful man in Anglo-Saxon Britain. Now, the historical record for this period is notoriously thin and unreliable, partly because we simply don't have a lot of information available, and also that the main chroniclers of the period had a habit of weaving myth into the facts of the story. So I apologise in advance for the sparsity of details, there's simply not a lot that we can be sure on. But what we do know is that by the early 600s, Edwin was conquering and growing ever more powerful and making lots of enemies. He had conquered the Kingdom of Elmit, which covered most of West Yorkshire in either 616 or 626, and this gave him access to the West Coast. He then conquered Anglesey in the Isle of Man and even waged war with the Irish. In 629, he laid siege to a man named Cadwallon up Cadfan, the King of Gwynedd in North Wales, on Puffin Island outside Anglesey. Cadwallon was presumably defeated, as he doesn't reappear again until a few years later, and a number of Welsh poems mention Cadwallon as escaping to Ireland before raising an army and returning to England. Now, there are some later traditions which have that Edwin was actually the foster brother of Cadwallon, that he spent his early life in exile in the court of the Kingdom of Gwynedd. Now, most of the sources we have for this come from the 12th century, which is 600 years after the events took place, and mostly written by people like Geoffrey of Monmouth, who, as I mentioned previously, did like to weave myth into the facts of their storytelling. So I'm very sceptical of this, but Edwin did spend his early life in exile. But I digress. There's no real explanation for how or why this took place, but Cadwallon ended up allying with Penda of Mercia, most likely because they both wanted to halt the power of Edwin and Northumbria. Mercia covered a lot of the middle area of England, stretching from the border with Wales down to the home counties. Penda probably wasn't king yet, and it's unclear what his position in Mercia was, but he allied with Cadwallon nevertheless to take down Edwin. The Venerable Bede, born 40 years after the battle, is the first to tell us of it, and he spares only two sentences to the story. He tells us, A great battle being fought in the plain that is called Haithfelth, Edwin was killed on the 12th of October, in the year of our Lord 633, being then 48 years of age, and all his army was either slain or dispersed. One legend has it that Edwin's head was cut off and sent to York. Another has his body hidden in Sherwood Forest near the village of Edwinstow, meaning Edwin's resting place, before it was reburied at Whitby. Both his sons died, one during battle and one executed by Pender after being captured. So, where was the battle? Well, we simply don't know. A lot of people assume it to have taken place at Hatfield Chase near Doncaster, hence the name, but personally I'm very sceptical. The first connection between Doncaster and the battle was made in the 16th century by the historian William Camden, who simply looked at the name Heathfield in Bede's account and matched it to Hatfield in Doncaster. Now, Camden forgot or didn't realise that Heathfield actually literally means place of unattended land, so it could have referred to any field in England, and in fact there's a lot of places in England called Hatfield. Places like Nottinghamshire have also claimed location of the battle, but honestly there is no way of knowing, we simply do not have the information available. Sometimes, as with most of Anglo-Saxon history, we've just got to be content with not knowing.